want to uh, encourage all of you to bake and enjoy the taste, texture, and success that it brings. But first, I want to apologize to the gluten-free, carb-free crowd here, because it must suck to be you. <laughs> gluten is magic. <laughs> Development of gluten affects the texture of baked goods. More developed gluten leads to chewier baked goods, like bagels or ciabatta, and less developed gluten is for tender baked goods. Bread has been around since prehistoric times. And uh, the ancient Egyptians learned how to isolate yeast and introduce it directly to their breads and probably enjoyed upwards of um, 30 different varieties of bread in ancient Egypt. Let them eat cake is famously attributed to Marie Antoinette, but technically brioche is an in, uh, enriched bread. It's full of eggs and butter, which is still out of reach of a starving peasant. Um, most baked goods have the same basic four ingredients, flour, liquid, leavening, and fat. And uh, what you do with those four ingredients gives you wildly different results from brownies to pizza dough. Key difference in these baked goods are, is the texture. It's um, the elasticity that gluten brings to your baked goods. And kneading promotes those long gluten, gluten strands as well as added moisture. Okay, bread flour is high in protein, cake flour is low in protein, and um, kneading turns those proteins into gluten strands. And your baked product will be chewier in proportion to how much that dough is worked. But sometimes you don't want chewy. <laughs> My cat. Like pie crust, or croissants, or um, cupcakes, or lady fingers, or biscuits, those kinds of things. Um, muffins, you don't want those to be tough, so you add your wet ingredients to your dry ingredients and you stir them no more than 12 times and then walk away. And any of those dry lumps that are in the batter will get rehydrated in, during baking and you'll be good to go. Cakes and cupcakes and cupcake pops will be tough with fully developed gluten chains. So again, wet ingredients into dry, mix just until they're incorporated and no more. But bread loves gluten. So you can start with a sponge, which will bring um, a complex flavor and stave off mold. You can do a dry biga or a wet poolish, add the additional ingredients, and then knead them to develop the gluten. No special equipment is needed to bake bread. People have been doing it for centuries. Just find a comfortable counter height, <laughs> fold, turn, and press the dough repeatedly until it's elastic and smooth. Nice guns. I'm lazy. I need an a kitchen made stand mixer for about 13 to 15 minutes, depending on what I'm doing. And I add any tender um, ingredients in towards the end so they don't get pulverized. I think additional ingredients make bread more interesting. Um, you can add eggs and butter, like uh, for the brioche and have an enriched bread. You can add in whole grains, like rye flakes and flaxseed, cheese, can't ever go wrong with cheese, or my favorite, um, cinnamon raisin bread. Makes great French toast. The single most important thing I've learned about baking bread is to do the window pane test. And uh, when I think I'm done kneading, I grab a hunk of bread, and the dough, and stretch it out, and it should look like this. If it tears or gets holes, it needs to be kneaded more. So now most of my bread looks like this, seven grain honey sandwich bread. Sandwich bread is mostly what I bake these days for my family. But why wouldn't I just buy it at the store? There's a million varieties at um, Fred Meyer of sandwich bread. Well, there's lots of reasons. There's no taste, there's no smell, there's no texture, there's no sense of accomplishment when I pull it off a shelf and stick it in my uh, grocery cart. Why would I want to do that? So, and there's also um, this list of reasons. Um, I, don't, I don't have phytostanols in my pantry, so they don't go in my bread. Um, the biggest argument for baking bread at home is just the inspiration of making magic. There's nothing that says home and love to me like the aroma of bread baking in the oven and knowing, you know, the anticipation of taking that first bite of crusty steaming bread slathered with melted butter. So don't be afraid of gluten. With, you know, the worst you're out is a couple of bucks and an hour of hands-on time, but with, um, Practice, patience, and a little bit of luck, you too will be making magic.